Good morning, student. I am Priya, faculty of IT department in AKG EC, Ghaziabad. Today we are going to discuss object-oriented programming features, which we uh, advanced feature of uh, programming Java. So the contents in these are default method, functional interface, lambda expression, method reference, Java stream API, base 64 and code code, and private resources. Discussing all these features will be included in your Java 8 version, which will be the enhanced version for providing these features. So, discussion started with the default method. Default methods are presented that will be presented in Java 8 with the purpose to allow interfaces to have method with concrete implementation. What does it mean that the methods present inside the interfaces have a concrete implementation that means that it can be declared and defined. Both of these things will be presented in this default methods. So, default methods are basically these with the help of the keyword default. You can define it and declare it and with the help of this you can provide your concrete implementation of your methods. So, the default method is going to be introduced in your Java 8 version. It means that before it, it can be uh, going to be used. If you are going to use the methods inside the interface that need to be only declared, no definition will be provided in this. With the help of this default keyword, default method can be declared and defined. So, when we talk about backward compatibility and enhanced functionality, it will be providing common functionality that will be allowing all that will be implementing classes. And with this backward compatibility that is allowing adding new methods to interfaces without breaking existing implementation. So, that will be the default methods. Now, with the help of a program, we can understand that how it is going to be used in this uh, particular interface. Suppose that you have provided an interface here. So, with this default void my default method. So, this method is going to be declared inside this, you have taken it and default void will be the default methods that you have taken it. In this default void method, this is going to be implementing default void my default method, interface my interface means you are providing an interface and this you are going to be default method you, with the help of this default keyword, you are providing this particular default method ok. So, that will be the thing you have taken it. Now, we are going to provide it this with the help of an example that default method you have to use this default keyword ok. So, default keyword is what? Default keyword will be providing that it will be going to be used the declaration and the definition part of your particular method that it will be providing the default method inside of this. And later on we have we are seeing that abstract method and an static method is defined inside of this particular interface. So, for defining these uh, inside of this method, the south statement is given for this, this is a static method. Suppose the declaration and definition part is given there. We have declared this method and we are defining this part also. Now, in a main methods that we are implements by implements interface means we are inheriting that will be going to be inherit this property of this interface at override means this particular a notation will be providing these are the a notation what these a notation will be doing these are doing that the part of this this particular public void test ab, uh, abstract is going to be override here now, with this, you are going to define this particular method inside this south statement will be uh, defining the part of your methods, ok. So, public class demo, in a main class, you are providing an object for it, my interface mi and new tam that you have given. Now, you are calling all of the method which you have declared inside your uh, interface. Suppose, you have taken this test abstract, what is this going to be declared? that is test abstract is going to be declared this, this is a static method, ok. And this mi dot my default method, my default is going to be here, this is a default method. My interface dot test static will be going to be declared that particular static method. 
so you are going to be declaring all of these and defining all of the part of this in a with the help of this default void keyword so default is a keyword which you are going to be used in your interface okay so that will be the thing that we are going to be with the help of this okay so in this particular example we are showing that how the default keyword is going to be helpful for creating a concrete class that uh, the uh, particular declaration and definition part of it is present with the help of the example here talking about the functional interface what are these functional interface is basically a new and important feature included in java uh, that is java 8 version that is standard edition 8 version a functional interface is that particular which will be consisting of a one abstract method it is also known as the sam single abstract method means inside of this functional interface you are going to provide a one abstract method suppose a notation is given that is at functional interface what does it mean at functional interface means you are providing that uh, declaration that it is going to be used only one interface, one abstract method inside of this. Okay. Suppose we have taken a Java built-in functional interface, runnable, callable and comparator. All of these will be consisting of what they will consisting, runnable will be consisting of a single abstract method run. Callable will be cons uh, consisting of single call method. Comparator is going to be co consisting of single compare method. So, with the help of this functional key, uh, functional interfaces, what we are doing, we are putting a single abstract method inside of this. So, all of these built-in functional interface which is provided by Java will be consisting of one single uh, single run, single uh, call method and the comparator method inside of it. Okay. So, uh, with the help of the example, we are going to understand it, how this functional interface is going to be used in the particular example. Suppose in a functional interface we have taken this example, only one abstract method is going to be allowed. So, suppose you have taken with the help of a notation you are going to restrict your programming that if you are providing any other method inside of it, it will throw an error in your programming that it is not allowed to declare more than one abstract method. So, when we, in this particular example we are showing that public you have taken a public class demo one and public is static. Talking about this example, we have taken an interface and we are going to use this public class demo1 and we with the help of this functional interface, we are putting some values in this uh, abstract, we are providing an abstract method inside this particular example. Okay. So, when we talk about this functional interface, only one abstract method is going to be allowed here. So, with the anonymous class, we are providing a class inside of this class. Okay. So, we are using this uh, particular method inside of a class and we have already taken a method outside of this that is public void test string s. Okay. Now, when we are using it in uh, our system that lambda expression are the expression which has the concise way of expression. System dot out dot print ln, you have taken these value and information 2 dot test it will be providing which particular this one is the values which is going to be abstract method okay this abstract method is going to be called hello and that will be uh, consisting of the next value will be this will be namaste india that will be the outcome for it means that if you are using functional interface only one abstract method is going to be provided here in all in this particular example okay Moving toward next, now we have taken an example here that lambda on comparator interface. We are saying that uh, in this particular example, we have taken three examples that is runnable, callable and comparator Java built-in functional interface. Okay. Now, talking about this interface that uh, you are going to use lambda on comparator interface. Comparator interface is going to be used with the comparison, comparison, uh, comparative part of the two values. So, when we talk about uh, this particular program, we have taken a class job in which we are providing job number, job name and that will be going to be used uh, that will be job number and job name and later on we have provided a method that is 
public string to a string. Okay, so that will be providing your job number and job name. So when you are providing these value with the help of this functional interface, what it is going? It is going the particular one abstract method that is the comparator interface. So when we are saying that this is going to be in this example, we have taken a comparator operator here that will be providing your join uh, that is your talking about this example, we are saying that job number and job name is presented here. Now we are saying that job number and job name will be there and a string in job number a string job name. Okay, now we are using this particular lambda on comparator interface. Talking about lambda expression, lambda expression is a way to express your all the values in a single statement. All expression will be kept in a single statement with the help of this lambda expression. So, you are taking this particular value and you are providing a functional interface here that you are providing a uh, string to string methods that will be returning the job number and your job name. Okay, in the main you have provided your list with this list dot off you are providing the values of your different different rows which you have assigned here. Now, this one is a list which will be created that is with the name of job number and job number and job name that is going to be placed here and these values will be going to be thrown inside of this particular ok. So, that you have taken job number and job name that is going to be provide or in this way. So, that we are saying ki, uh, that will be the different thing with functional interface you are using this particular one abstract method and with the help of this comparator you are providing the value of all these uh, um, all these array list which you have created with this array list job job okay that is given by the name a l okay so that will be the sorting you have provided here with the help of this comparator operator now moving toward next so now with the we have seen that functional interface is going to be work with your uh, comparator operator now we are saying this runnable how it is going to be used in threads when we talk about threads in a java programming language it is going to execute more than one program and it will be executing in a different manner in an operating system we are saying that number of tasks will be a uh, task will be divided into a number of tasks and all of these tasks will be further performed by the threads inside of it so when you are performing Java programming that will be providing your threads in a different different manner okay all of these uh, threads will be going in a some life cycle that particular life cycle will be executed with the help of the methods present inside of this so when we talk about the functional interface suppose we have given a runnable interface so that particular runnable method will be go, uh, providing you the list of the methods that will be functional interface suppose that you have taken a new thread new learnable at over right now you are providing all of these value from 0 to 1 10 you have taken these all of these things that you are providing thread dot current thread ok so that particular dot get name is providing all of the list values of your threads from 0 to 10 ok so that particular lambda expression you have used here to execute your threads in a single line of a statement from 0 to 10 ok. So, that will be the thing thread dot current thread dot get name all of these thread will be executed with the help of the functional interface ok. So, new thread runner dot start the start is a method which is going to be used whenever the thread is executing start is a method from which the thread will be executed. So, with the help of this particular uh, interface you are executing your runnable method inside of a thread ok. So, that will be the thing which you are going to be provide with the help of this example. Now, moving toward next that which uh, providing all of the threads value from thread 0 to thread 10. Suppose they have taken this threads executing in a runnable state. So, that you have provided in the uh, previous example you have taken a runnable interface and with this runnable methods you are providing the you are providing the value from 0 to 10 and with the strike catch block you have taken the exception handling cases that suppose there is a you have taken a thread sleep for 300 millisecond 
and later on the catch will be provided using lambda expression you have provided runnable runner and all of the threads value from 0 to 10 and your south statement is going to be execute for your each of the threads value now the thread is executing on the basis of the different different stack values that is provided with the help in this example okay Now, talking about lambda expression, what are these? Lambda expression are a new and important feature included in Java uh, standard edition 8. Lambda expression is a concise way to represent an anonymous functions. When we talk about anonymous functions, it means that it will be the value which will be consisting of without name. They enable functional programming in Java simplifying the code. What the lambda expression are doing? They are providing a clear and concise version of your coding that will be the lambda expression also improve the collection libraries making it easier to iterate through filter and extract data from a collection. When we talk about collection library it will be consisting of arrays, lists and number of things that will be executed on the basis of lambda expression that you have providing all of the programming in a concise way. So it will be reducing code length. The benefits of using lambda expression are these that is consciousness reduce boiler co uh, plate code that will be the thing that boilerplate code is what the extra lines of code which you have written in your program that means that the lines which you have written is not required with the help of this particular lambda expression. So, it will be improving the readability that with the less number of lines in the code you are increasing the readability as well as uh, the functionality is going to be increased. Functional programming enable functional programming paradigms that will be provided here. Now, talking about the syntax of it, how it is going to remove the extra lines for it. Suppose we have taken an extra line public void at int a and int b. These are the way which we are going to perform the way of expressing it. It is required when you are suppose you are doing the summation of these two a plus v. Now, with the help of this lambda expression, we are saying there is no need to use this particular public void at. We have to directly given this parameter value a comma b and you are providing the return value directly on assigning on these uh, right side. Okay, with the left side, we are providing the parameters and with the this arrow key, we are on the left side of the uh, right side of it, we are providing the output of it. So, we are saying that parameter, what is the basic syntax for it? Parameters and with the help of the arrow key, we are providing the expression of it. So, all these things that means that we are required to, uh, there is no need to add all of these things. So, that will be increasing the code uh, readability as well as the, that will be providing more enhancement to your programming. Now, when we talk about syntax breakdown, we are saying that uh, the there will be a way that providing in lambda expression with no parameter with single parameter and with multiple parameter. With no parameter, we are not passing any parameter inside of your uh, uh, expression that is system.out.println is uh, on the left, we have directly put it the braces and the output is provided on your right side. Single parameter, we are providing a single value of uh, your variable and we are putting a uh, output of this on your uh, right side and multiple parameter, you are providing values inside a braces and returning a value on the, your right side. Okay. So, in this way your lambda expression will be executed that it will be consisting of your different different parameters. Now, method difference, what are these method difference? As the name is suggesting that method is going to be referred. Whenever you are referring to something, you are saying that refer this thing. So, that means that reference is provided in a way that it will be going to be achieve something better. Means you are achieving something in a faster way. So, introduced in Java 8, uh, Java 8 is going to be introducing new features which will be helpful for your programming, uh, uh, programming speed as well as for code readability as well as for flexibility. So, method difference can uh, provide a way to refer to method directly by their name. So, with the uh, directly using their name, you can access all of these things. So, purpose they simplify lambda expression by reducing boilerplate code. So, what is the purpose of using these lambda expression method difference? So, whenever you are using method difference, you are reducing your boilerplate code. The code which you have written, which is necessary for uh, achieving the output is not required with this new features in Java 8. So, what are the four main types of it? Talking about four main types, that will be the reference to a static method, reference to an instance method of a particular object, 
reference to an instant method of an arbitrary object of a particular type and reference to a constructor. Now, when we talk about reference to a static method, it will be consisting of a way how it is going to be achieved in the static method. And when we talk about instant method, it is how it is going to be achieved in the instance method. And third one is your instant method of an arbitrary object. And fourth one is your reference to a constructor. Now, talking about the syntax for all. When we talk about the syntax, the syntax will be consisting of the static method and class name, method name. You are providing how the method reference is going to be work. The reference will be provided with the help of this colon, double colon operator. Now, we are saying that double colon will be provided here. That means that now we are saying static method, basic syntax for the static method. With a static method, you are providing class name, double colon, method name. Means double colon is going to be refer the method. This is what? This is going to be refer your method. This is the operator you are going to be with the help of this method reference will be provided. So, static method, class name and method name will be provided here. Instance method of a particular object, you are providing an instance and with double colon you are referring to a method and method name is provided here. Instance method of an arbitrary object, you have taken a class name with the double colon operator, you are referring to a method with the help of this method name. Now, in a constructor, you are directly calling the constructor class name with the help of this new keyword you are working upon this constructor okay so all all of these is a way syntax to achieve all these thing so when we talk about method difference these are the syntax that is provided with your static method instance method instance method of an arbitrary object and the constructors now talking about one by one example of it when we are saying that array suppose you are using the array and list you have to provide a package for it with the help of this util package class show you have provided this particular class inside of this class you have taken a void display method okay and in this you are passing a string value as system dot out dot print ln you have they taken this value as and later on you have provided a string output so how these value will be achieved here that array you have provided you have created a list and in this list you have taken array dot as list and the names you have provided here with the help of for each uh, method uh, with the help of for each operator you have taken this show and uh, method reference will be given there show display how you are achieving this display output that the display method that the display method you have provided in your first show math, uh, inside your show class that will be executed with the help of the method reference you have provided with the list dot for each. Okay, so that we are providing that for each is a loop that will be executing at each level of your array as list. Okay, so array that uh, dot as list is a function you have provided in your list items. It means that it is referring to a display, particular display method that all of these values will be displayed out. So, that will be the thing you are achieving in your output. In the second example, you are saying that import java.util.array, these, these are the packages you have taken and inside of the show method, you have taken the value, inside this show method, you have taken the string values. Now, you are saying that arrays.asList you have taken and you are providing this new with this help of this you are what you are doing you are calling a constructor okay so with this with the help of this you are using the constructor uh, method reference okay so you with the as dot double colon display you are calling this particular method okay later on the example is given that consisting of a values show method will be consisting of a particular uh, are passing an argument inside of this okay so south statement will be consisting of this dot message okay so that particular message string message will be printed and this south uh, statement now you have provided arrays dot as list function in which you have provided a list item alex comma new show brian and new show charles so that each of the values which you have displayed will be according to your method reference value you have provided here in this example. Okay. So, the last one is given that functional interface. With this annotation at functional interface, you are saying that only one abstract method is allowed. 
So you have taken an interface, my interface, in which you are passing an abstract method, student get. Now with the abstract method, you are saying that the concrete declaration and definition part can be provided here. In a class student, you have taken a string value of your uh, private string string value which you have provided and public student, student uh, uh, categories will be provided here. The name of the student is given this particular value in a string. And later on in the main, you have taken the uh, constructor reference. Okay, with this new keyword, you are you going to be my, uh, refer your constructor that you have provided here with the class student. Okay, so that is the way you are providing your uh, method reference in your examples. Talking about java.util uh, function, that is java.util function package provide standard library based functional interface for common requirement with their corresponding lambda expression which can be used by the programmer in his code instead of creating brand new functional interface. It means that java.util uh, function package will be providing number of functions that will be providing functional interfaces. Functional interfaces which have a different different methods presented inside of it for your better programming approach. Now talking about function. This interface has only one function applied. When we talk about function that will be an interface which have only one function that is going to be, which have only one method which is the apply method. This function takes one input parameter as t and return values r after performing some kind of operation. It means that it will be taking the value of t and returning some uh, value r after performing some, uh, performing some operation on it. This t and r may have any type of values like integer, float, double, string, etc. Okay. So, talking in example, we have taken a, the list value list dot of 34 uh, that uh, different different uh, values we have taken and we are using this function float and returning which will be performing some operation. Suppose we have taken this here and we are performing some operation on it, okay. Checking this example, suppose we have taken this java dot util dot function, okay. In this we have taken a created a list here that will be consisting of the values list we have created and later on the list will be providing the values of it. Now in this example we have seen that list will be created for these value and now we are saying with the help of this particular uh, that we have taken function. This fun particular function will be taking a single value float and returning some float value and the operation performing on it is a uh, that we have defining with this fn that is f minus f divided by 2 you have taken. Okay, this particular is going to be apply a single uh, uh, method inside of the function that is your apply method. Okay, so that is how the statement will be going to implement it with the help of this operation you have provided here in your program. Okay, so that, that for each is going to be execute on all each of the value of your which you have created inside of the list. Okay, so this example is going to execute your output on the basis of the operation you have performed. Okay, so in, uh, later on example is given with the uh, string values you have provided and in this uh, string value you have provided a message that is uh, that you have provided some summation value of it and with the help of this uh, operator. So dot, dot uh, list dot for each is providing each of the values output presented for each of the value you have taken in your list. Okay. So now uh, from these example we have seen that how the function is going to be used. Function is going to accept only a single uh, method that is your apply method. Okay. So later on we will discuss about Java stream API. Stream API is going to be uh, that is a new feature in Java 8 that all the classes and interface of this stream API is in the java.util.stream package. If you want to use this stream particular that you have to need it to uh, a particular package need to be uh, uh, written on your code that is java.util.stream package. So by using this package the programmer can perform various aggregate operation on the data written from collection array and input output operation. So the stream API provide a functional approach to process collection of objects. When we talk about the collection of objects, it means that you are talking about the arrays list and the set 
and different uh, collections which you have taken in your uh, collection library from your collection library and providing a functional approach. It means that you are performing some operation with the help of a stream. You are making a flow of the various values that is to perform complex data processing operation in a concise and readable manner. It means that all of the value you have provided is going to be in a stream way. Okay, so with this stream API that is going to be execute all of the value in a single way. Okay, so uh, later on the example is provided here that is stream uh, that you stream when uh, when we talk about the stream it is going to be functional programming that is emphasizing operations such as map reduce number of operation will be provided there. Okay, so uh, in the later uh, on uh, we talk about in a later uh, videos we will talk about what are the various operation which can be performed with the help of the streams. Okay, so uh, until uh, uh, stream concept will be discussed later. Thank you so much for all of these uh, topics covering. Okay, thank you, students.